save him. It's you and me, bud. Always. How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World. Hi, my name is Kyle Suggs and welcome to my channel. And today I'm going to be reviewing this film and giving you my conservative take. Now, the way this works is I'm going to rank the movies out of five categories. And out of the five categories, I'm going to give a four-star ranking. And then I'm going to give you my suggestion on whether or not you should go, not go, or to go with caution. This section will be a spoiler section, and I will put a spoiler note below. That way you can decide whether or not you want to jump ahead or be spoiled. So with that, we're going to start right now. It's hard to believe that after 20 years, we have come to this. In 2010, the first installment of How to Train Your Dragon hit the movie theater. It blew fans away. It blew me away with its emotion, its depth, its excitement. And then four years later, people were wondering, could it top itself? And it almost did. In some ways, I like the second one better than the first one. And now we're at the conclusion of the story. And the question is, is this one going to live up to that? I say it does. As far as the film itself, the story is not the best. And it's funny I would say that, that after giving it such praise, how can the story not be as great as the others and yet it still be holding up as well as the others? Well, the thing about this movie is other aspects of it pick this film up. And as far as the story is concerned, it really just deals with the core issue of the friendship between Toothless, the dragon, and Hiccup, the young man who is the, the friend of the dragon. And they come up together at an early age, and there's an interdependency between the two of them that has carried itself through the beginning of the first film to the ending of this film. And that, to me, is the power of this film. For me, I was not really into the film at all until the last 10 minutes. And that's when I want to talk about the emotional impact of this film is incredible. Up to three quarters of the movie into, I was just like, okay, this is just not holding up. I was not impressed. There were some relationships in there that wasn't really clicking for me. Some of the side characters really weren't clicking for me. Kate Blanchett's character really wasn't doing anything. She was the star in part two, but in this part, she really wasn't doing much. She had nothing to do. And I was a little frustrated. And the bad guy, played by F. Murray Abraham, was kind of like one of these mustache-twisting villains, and he was almost like a one-note character. He plays this dragon hunter who is famous for destroying the dragons, or to extinction, of the same species that Toothless is. Toothless, Toothless is a very rare dragon and a very powerful dragon, and this guy was very much in opposition of them and trying to destroy them off the face, face of the planet. And that was, the, that was his goal, but there was no real thought behind his character. So I was kind of disappointed. So as I got more into the film, the intangibles of this film started to show itself in subtle ways. The score is amazing by John Powell. He comes back and he does an amazing job. And the scenes remind me of, I don't want to be sacrilegious here, but it reminds me a lot of Star Wars in terms of its operatic and big orchestra score and how it goes with the action scenes. And it really builds the scene up and it really gets you into it. And the last thing for Intangibles would be, has to be the ending of it. Because again, this movie was only tracking, in my opinion, at around a three-star ranking. I may be giving something away here in terms of the final ranking, but as it got to the end of the movie, I was like, okay, is this it? And then it hit. Those last 10 minutes are going to pull everything out of you in terms of your emotion because it drives all the stuff, all the narratives of the entire series and brings them on and just punch you right in the chest. And it's, it's really awesome. And that, to me, elevates the movie at a level that I was not expecting that late in the game. So as far as my conservative take, this is going to be a go. 
I think the takeaway from this film is that love is action, love is not selfish, and love is forever. I think those are the major narratives that drives through this as it builds up through this relationship between Hiccup and Toothless. The bond is strong, and the film really plays up to that, and they're very smart to do that. So this movie's a go, all the way go, and you'll have a great time with your family. And if you have not seen the other two, you need to see the other two. There really is no option. Otherwise, you're going to be lost. So go see the other two. You won't be sorry. They're all awesome. And then by the end of it, you're going to really enjoy and have the powerful impact that this movie builds up to. Okay, now, so for my final review, this movie comes in at 16, which translates to a three and a half star ranking out of four, and a definite go for my conservative take. Now, as far as where How to Train Your Dragon fits in the history of trilogies, I think it's going to be in the top three easily, and one of the top two for animated. So, I think this film is a great conclusion. It ties in things from the very first film and it wraps it nicely for the third film. And the whole interconnectivity between the two, the symbiotic relationship that the two have between Hiccup and Toothless, it all comes together and it meshes and it's, it really comes together and I think it's a beautiful way to do it. But the important thing is, what do you think? Did you watch and like How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World? If so, comment below and let us know. I would love to know what you think. And if you enjoy the content on this channel, please do me a favor and like and subscribe. And remember to hit that bell icon so that you can receive updates as they come out. And so I hope this review was enjoyable and informative and continue to be awesome. And I'll see you on my next conservative take.